Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Today, we are talking about physical examination for holistic and alternative medicine in digestive disturbances. This is a lost art, and I don't think that doctors are really examining patients for what I would call everyday boring routine imbalances. When you go to a doctor, a traditional medical doctor, they're really good at listening to your heart and lungs, and that's about it. They do a cursory physical exam otherwise, and they pay attention to eyes, ears, nose, and throat because people go to doctors for infections. So what is to be done for the guts? Well, the guts are pretty fun and, and pretty easy to examine. And in fact, if you want to examine your own child, you want to examine your, your partner or loved ones, you want to begin to screen them for an actual doctor visit. This won't replace a doctor visit, of course, but I think it's very useful to learn these skills for yourself and other people. When we examine a person, the first thing we do is ask them if anything hurts. And most chronic conditions of the guts do not hurt. Most people don't have active pain in their guts when they have a digestive disturbance. They might have bad bowels, they might have flatulence or constipation or diarrhea or any number of maldigestions, but they don't have pain, most of them. Some of them get reflux, esophagitis, and heartburn right here and here, but largely below the ribcage, they don't have any pain. They're unaware of anything going on in their belly, and they may have constipation, and they may have bloating, but really not a lot of pain. So what happens with these folks is we want to find out, first of all, are they going to have pain? So we want to get our fingers in there, and we want to palpate them, but we don't know what's going on with them. So from a, from a discipline perspective or a doctoring perspective, we have this least invasive to most invasive type of, um, you know, levels of engagement or levels of, of invasiveness. So the least invasive is asking questions. The next more invasive would be auscultation or listening, where we set a stethoscope on their body and we listen without pressing too much, just in case they had something really wrong in there, right? The next one would be percussion, where we're tapping the body and listening to the sounds of the air and the gas and the water that's in there and the fluid and tissue and the organs, which is mostly water and doing percussion and listening to whether there's timpani or dullness. Timpani or dullness, which means echo or thud. Thud is mostly normal, and echo is mostly abnormal, because there shouldn't be air in the abdomen, or in, in any of the organs, really. And then the most invasive one is, is a palpation, and there's kind of gentle palpation and deep palpation. Now, a healthy abdomen in all of the mammals should be soft and non-tender. Whether it's a horse or a cat or a dog or a human, you should be able to, if you have their trust, be able to palpate all the way through their abdomen into their, into their spine and their rib cage and feel everything with little resistance. And I'm talking no ticklishness, no pain, no lumps, no bumps, no, no reaction, no biting at you. I realize that most dogs, cats, horses, pigs, goats, they wouldn't let you do this. But if you have a relationship with your pet and, or your friends or your family or people that you could palpate or your children, ideally, if they're relaxed enough and you're relaxed enough, you should let them in to examine your belly you, and you should be able to examine theirs. So that idea that an abdomen hurts because you're poking at it is not really, really funny. I'm reminded of a, of a joke in Missouri, the show me state. I had some patients that said, well, you know, it hurts because you're mashing on me because I had my fingers halfway in their abdomen. They said, well, no, of course it hurts because you're pressing on me. And then I tell them that, you know, all the medical textbooks say that the abdomen should be soft and compliant and non-tender. And really most of the body should be to all of the muscles and all of the organs, except for a few things like the testes and the ovaries and the eyeballs, really, and a couple of nerves like the funny bone, right? There's a few places where our nerves are close to the surface and, and they're painful to the touch. Most things on the body should be soft and non-tender to deep palpation and, and almost aggressive palpation. Even ticklishness is a sign of neurological sensitivity. Truly healthy people and animals should be able to, to yield to full palpation without any problems. If everything is working right, emotionally, physically, and digestive-wise, chemically, and mechanically. So we progress from observation and question asking to auscultation, listening with a stethoscope, to percussion, which is tapping. It's either tapping on two fingers with your one finger or two fingers, or thumping with your fist on a full hand like this. So like this, or like this. Those are the two forms that we might do of percussion. And then lastly, superficial and deep palpation, with deep palpation being the deepest one. And we do that when we palpate things like the intestines, 
or the psoas muscle, or we're really going through the abdomen, we're going inches. And, and the intestines are great. They move out of the way slowly. And as long as you're patient, it'll get out of the way in, in time and you'll be able to get in there and, and examine without really hurting anybody or causing any problems. But you wouldn't want to dive in to a sudden deep palpation without those other steps. Because what happens if they had a tumor or an aneurysm or bleed or, or God knows what, an infection? There's all kinds of things that you don't want to just invasively dive into. So you want to get a warning sign that says, hey, back off and maybe have an x-ray or a doctor look at them first before you go doing that. Because I'm not trying to have you replace your doctor. I'm just trying to have you learn. Because we don't have an owner's manual for these bodies, do we? When you auscultate, it helps to turn people on their sides. Lay them on their back, listen to their abdomen, listen to their small intestine in a circle at the middle of their abdomen, listen to their large intestine all around like this and down to both sides. And, you know, if, if you're going down to their waist, get their permission, because if you're listening to their waist, you know, we're down in no man's land there. You want to make sure you, you have permission if you're, if you're listening, uh, you know, at the belt line and below. I mean, you want permission for all of this, but especially permission for, for that. And then leaning the person to their right side, all the gas should go up. When you lean them on their left side, all the gas should go up. When you tilt them up on a table or put them up on a pillow, that incline should make the gas rise. So you, you'll be able to listen, and just by listening to all the gas in, in their abdomen, you'll be able to discern they have indigestion. Once you discern that they have indigestion, you're able to assess the stomach and the gallbladder. You're able to palpate the liver, and you're able to palpate the small intestine and the large intestine. The large intestine and small intestine will often have palpable tenderness, but no active pain. That means that the patient says, I don't hurt from here down. I don't, I'm not aware of any pain. Until you poke me. And that goes back to the Missourian that says, hey, it hurts because you're mashing on me. No, it hurts because there's something wrong. There's a, there may be an, a, a stricture in the large intestine, which is a, an area of tightening. There may be constipation, a, a little diverticulous, uh, diverticulosis or diverticulitis. There may be all kinds of reasons why a person may have tenderness in their large intestine to palpation, to fingers, and also in the small intestine. So in the small intestine, you'll find that there will be also tenderness too often when they have chronic indigestion. It means that their cells of their intestine are inflamed and sore, and they have this palpatory tenderness. It's kind of similar to the chronic healing of an ankle. If you've ever hurt your ankle, and you sprained it, and it's in that first phase of chronic sprain, where it's swollen and puffy, and it hurts to put weight on it, it hurts to touch it, you know that you've got active pain. Because if I said, hey, you're not doing anything with your ankle, does it hurt? And you say, oh yeah, it hurts. That's phase one. But later on in phase two, when the inflammation goes down, there's low-grade inflammation and tissue repair going on in that ankle. And when you're sitting down and doing nothing with your ankle, you might say, it doesn't hurt. You might even walk on it and say it doesn't hurt. But if you try to play basketball or if you try to play tennis on that ankle, now it hurts. If I take my finger and I press into that ankle, now it hurts. That is palpable tenderness, which helps us discern that the person's not in the most acute phase of injury repair but they're in that chronic phase of repair. And so just because somebody says my abdomen doesn't ever hurt doesn't mean they don't have palpable tenderness. And we want to establish palpable tenderness in our physical exam as a finding that we can compare to later because when you get healthy, that should go away. And that's the introduction to physical exam of the abdomen for nutrition.